It is sometimes difficult to see the difference between the creator and the created. Sometimes. Because sometimes you can believe that you're worshiping God when you're really worshiping his creation, his plan. I don't think the biggest um, obstacle we have to overcome is the devil. I believe that's already done. Um, as far as, you know, the d discerning the difference between light and darkness. I think light is light and darkness is darkness. I understand that the enemy can make himself seem like light. Can make himself seem like light. Uh, but the way I read it, it's reflective power. In other words, you're wielding the power of God and as far as making yourself look like light, but your intentions are in and of yourself. So you're wielding the power of God, the abilities of God, the talents of God, but it's for your own benefit. It's, it's, for, your, it's for yourself. And I believe it becomes difficult to see who has the right intentions and who has the wrong intentions. And I don't think individually we have the power or the jurisdiction to decide for someone else or decide about someone else. I think you just have to make your decisions based upon your values, your character, and then they will get their reward as well. So if I see someone doing something that is not, does not line up with my culture, my belief system, my way of being, I don't have to welcome that culture in other words they're in the midst of doing things saying things that doesn't line up they're uncorrectable they haven't you know we, we take them through the phases you know you talk to them on an individual basis you bring them up before the leadership you bring them up before the congregation and if they're stiff-necked, that's a different issue. There's a process to all of God's works. But we don't worship the process, we worship the creator of the process. You know, we, uh, we don't bow down to someone out of fear. Or, you know, fear can be con considered worship within itself because we're to fear God. But we don't d bow down to the created of by God. If it's not God, it's created. So I'm hoping for my kids, my grandkids, my brothers and sisters in Kenya, my brothers and sisters in Ghana, my brother in Bangladesh, for my son in Japan. I'm, I'm hoping, and for whomever else this helps 
and considers me a teacher. God bless you. I'm hoping that you understand, and, and it is, can be in the mind complicated. In the mind. It's not complicated, but you can't over complicate things. When you bow down to something, you worship it. Um, ooh boy. So the question is, what does it mean to bow down to something? When you bow down to something, you are worshiping it. So what does it mean to bow down to it so that you can catch yourself if you begin to worship other gods? I'm going to answer that question for you. I don't believe it's the intention of people who say they love God want to serve God, want to live by God, are attempting to bow down to other gods. I don't believe that. Uh, in, in truth, in Deuteronomy 17, if you continue to read all the way through it, which we're not today, <laughs> um, In truth, it is sometimes difficult to discern. Maybe we will touch on it, but we'll see what happens, how far, how, how long this goes. It's sometimes difficult. That's the reason why, as a human being, we can't be so judgmental of people who slip into begin doing this and it really becomes easy to do once you have a little success just a little success you you can begin to bow down to the created Uh, or those who you look up to. Let me say it like that. Um, who do great things for the creator. So, we're talking about the difference between the creator and the created. Deuteronomy chapter tw uh, chapter 17 follows after Deuteronomy 16 where we spend some time talking about the feast. This moves into a different aspect of the lifestyle that God expects us to have towards him. So we've talked about relationship. We've talked about the deliverance. We've talked about collaboration through the feast. We've talked about success. And now we're talking about relationship as it pertains to God, the creator, and not to bow down to the idols which will pop up after these other things I just explained to you. Deliverance, here are the steps. Collaboration, success, increase, if you will. And God is warning us, don't bow down to idols. Now this is important 
and I'm hoping you can make the connection. If you want to, read through Deuteronomy 16 again with that, with that perspective. And now into Deuteronomy 17, which begins like this in verse 1. Thou shall not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God bullocks or sheep wherein blemish any evil favoredness for that an abomination unto the Lord thy God. I'm sure you know what I mean by that. In other words, you have some success now. Success brings out blemished products. Uh, let, me, let me say it in 21st century language. When you become successful, you like to keep the best and give away the worst. You uh, start accumulating, and hey, I'm giving. I, I work for a young lady. Uh, well, let me be more respectful, a woman who has spent her life setting up her or a lot of her adult life, not her whole life, but a lot of her adult life setting up her nonprofit organization and has served the poor, the underserved, for close to 16 or 17 years, I forget. She also has a thrift store where she is abundantly blessed to the point where she has to pull every once in a while has to slow down the blessings. What she receives is anything from brand new to raggedy things and anything in between. Certain things are sold to pay the bills. Certain things are given away and certain things are just trashed. What I appreciate about her ministry is the things she gives away are as close as possible to the things she sells. How many of you have that mindset? Are you giving away your raggedy because you don't want them anymore? Or are you giving away your best? Not because you don't want them. Not because you don't need them. Not because you can't use them. Verse 2. Deuteronomy 17, verse 2. If there be among you within any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God give thee, man or woman, that hath wrought wickedness. Now, a lot of y'all think that that's just bad behavior. This is where you get into the personality-driven church. No, it's defined. In the sight of the Lord thy God, in trespassing his covenant. Uh, uh, well, trans transgressing, transgressing, not trespassing, transgressing. Sorry, read it wrong. In transgressing his covenant. Let me look that up real quick. Just want to make sure. I've looked it up many times, but you never know. You never know. I, might, I don't want to get it wrong. That's Hebrew 5674. Transgressing. Um, it's overstepping, but you know, let's just make sure. 
Uh, it means passing over. Yeah. Pass beyond, pass through, tra- traverse. Uh, uh, to cross. So it, it, it has it has um, the idea of you know what the covenant is. And you just decide to pass over whatever that covenant is. Um, you, 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 you don't acknowledge it, the covenant. When I think about my grandkids. Mom will say one thing and the grandkids will make a decision to do something on purpose, transgressing the covenant of a mother and a child. The covenant is twofold, just as it was for Jesus. I have to bring up Jesus every once in a while for the New Testament Christians. You know, Jesus grew in favor with God and man because covenants are between you and God and you and man. Now, now catch this because we're right there. Your covenant with man cannot transgress your covenant with God or you begin to worship the created Deuteronomy 17 verse 2 that wroth wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God in transgressing his covenant his alliance Another word, covenant is an uh, alliance is another word for covenant. You have an alliance to sustain, to keep, to maintain, to grow. Your covenant with God has to guide or should guide your covenant with anything else. Because it's created. How we transgress our covenant with God is we want to play nice with our covenant with other things and people. It creates a schism, a division that can cause Idol worship. If you're aware of your covenant with God, which most um, experienced people are, you would have to justify your behavior to prioritize your covenant with man. We're not supposed to do that. Now, there's always confession. There's always, um, you know, because we don't, we don't get it right all the time. But the goal is to get it right. Let me uh, go into verse 3 so you understand the consistency of this. It says, And hath gone and served other gods and worshipped them. And then it gives you some, some of the, excuse me, and it gives you some of the created works, sun or moon or any of the host of heaven. Sun or moon or any of the host of heaven. When you hear the word host, it, um, it, 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 it's really talk, it, 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 
like the Lord of hosts, the Lord of war, the Lord of warriors. Although the word warrior is not in there, war is. The host. Hebrews 66, 35. I, I, I do this in front of you, which I don't have to, and most don't. Because <laughs> again, this is my personal Bible study. Study to show yourself approved. I do this in front of you so that you can see the importance of getting to know God, his method of operating, which is the kingdom of God for yourself. Hebrew 66, 35, Saba is army war warfare. Now, some of you may or may not, where you either do or you don't, make the connection. Why would anyone want to worship war? It's a good question. I don't know. However, let me give you a little bit of clarity because what it's saying is do not worship an organized army of people. Who? Who? Verse 3, which I have not commanded. In other words, they're not doing the will of God. Don't worship the warriors, the organized army, and especially if they're not doing, verse three, which I have not commanded. This, especially today in the year 2024, there are a lot of people who make the proclamation of loving Jesus. Who aren't necessarily, or in particular, are not looking at, in particular, are not looking at the kingdom of God and the principles of the kingdom of God, the rules, the statutes, the judgments, the commandments, the testimony thereof, which shows you the wisdom of the experiences of following the kingdom of God. They're looking to someone to decipher that for them. And they're worshiping the decision makers and saying, even though they don't understand fully what's going on at all, not even, not not at all, they're discounting and justifying the decisions of an army, which they are honestly members of because there would be no validity. They wouldn't be valid unless there was a group of people who are actually following behind someone for a purpose other than worshiping God, living for, bowing down to God. The proof is in the New Testament, which solidifies the words in the Old Testament that talks about the necessity of this component called love. If you are doing something, speaking evil and wickedness, you cannot also represent love at the same time. The idea of representing love and evil and wickedness at the same time 
doesn't make sense. Now I'm talking about love, the personality of love, because you can love your evil. You can love your wickedness. But I'm speaking of the God of love. Going back to what I originally said at the beginning of this video, it's nothing you can discern. You think you can sometimes, but you can't. Which is the reason why we can't judge the people. We can judge the actions. Do they line up with the kingdom of God? Are they wrought with wickedness? Which is the breaking of the alliance with God. Or are they consistent with the values? Keep in mind what we're talking about. Coming out of Deuteronomy 16, you're now successful. You're now successful. You're now successful. It's interesting to me as well, successful people complaining about the environment of successful people. Now, when I say people, I'm not talking about an individual. I'm talking about a people group. Because even in a people group, there's poverty. Poverty, as we read before, will always be with us. Our responsibility is to provide for the poor. Not giving them just food. But demonstrating leadership. To change the course of their life. That's not done through wickedness and evil. That's done through the operation of the kingdom. Bringing people into your home or your sphere of influence, if you will. Discovering their talents. And helping them to get on the right way. You will always have those who are ill that you have to take care of. That has nothing to do with your idol worship of some individual or some thing. That has everything to do with us worshiping God by living according to our alliance to him and our alliance to people and showing them who he is. Cash App dollar sign the Mr. Paul Dozier. Cash App dollar sign the Mr. Paul Dozier. Or Zell, Paul C. Dozier at gmail.com. Paul C. Dozier at gmail.com. Or you can support me on Amazon, Amazon Books. Just type in Paul C. Dozier. Got to put the C in there. Paul C. Dozier. We are on a journey from Genesis to Revelation. I do not know how long it's going to take. But we are on that journey. Study to show yourself approved. This is my personal Bible study that I'm leaving as a legacy to those who I have the opportunity to influence. I believe it's my duty to point them to God, not to me. If you feel like this is helpful, please like and share it. If it's helpful to you, it'll be helpful to somebody else. So please like and share the material on whatever platform you're on in whatever year you're in. <laughs> you know, hope this to hope this will last into a legacy beyond my my lifetime. God bless you and thank you for taking the journey with me and thank you for taking the journey with us who feel called to establish the kingdom of heaven.